Homes. Let's take a cruise through what today looks like. Uh, today is Tuesday. Yahoo! We are going to be going through um, three lessons, 12, 13, and 14. In these lessons, we're checking out uh, two-dimensional figures and we are examining something called symmetry. So that's going to be super fun. Don't forget our uh, Google Meet. It is optional, but I'd love to see you all there. Uh, is today at 10. You can click this link um, at 10 to join us. Okay. Um, some announcements. I wanted to talk to you all briefly about iReady. I would love, 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 love for you to find about 30 to 45 minutes per week to hop on iReady. Um, this is just really, really great practice. Um, for you in regards to math when it comes to extending your learning and supporting your learning. So if you're not already, I would love for you to find the time really just like 10 minutes a day, um, is really all we need on iReady. I don't want you to be on there for any longer than 45 minutes per week. Um, but yes, try to try to find some time to hop on iReady. Um, today, you're going to have the option also to, well, for the rest of the week until Thursday, you'll have the option to um, check out some practice problems for our noetic contest, which is on Thursday. I've linked that um, at the end of our stack today. Um, these are the purple slides. Again, these are optional noetic uh, contest practice problems. I will um, post the solutions tomorrow. So you can work through those today. Um, and then once we get into our work, please make sure, actually, before you get into your work, uh, that you read the blue new content slides. These are not optional. You must read through these and click all of the links before you start your independent practice. This is really where the learning is. This is the good stuff. Uh, so again, please make sure before you begin your independent work that you sort through, read, click, think about, digest all of the uh, great information on our blue slides. This needs to happen every single day. As you can see, there's quite a bit um, for you here today. We're introducing lots of new content. So again, it's really, really important that you stay up on all of the blue new content slides each day before you begin your, begin your independent practice. Once you uh, sort through those blue content slides, then you can go ahead and get into your independent practice. Uh, today we have um, kind of a mix between doing some work here on Google Slides, and then you'll also be hopping over to Go Formative because we are going to be doing some drawing today. Um, I'll need you to do the drawing in Go Formative because we don't really have good capabilities with that in Google Slides. Um, this item, um, sorry, I lost it. This table you, is going to require you to click and type in you're going to be looking at uh, these different types of triangles and then using the options for side lengths and angle measurement, you're going to classify each of these triangles. Uh, so that's going to look like you just clicking inside of each of the boxes and then you'll just write your option. Clearly what I just wrote is not a great option, uh, but I just wanted to show you how that worked. Um, let's see the rest of this. The rest of these problems should be very straightforward. And I'm excited to see what you ha come up with. Have fun with it. Uh, let's take a look at our practice or uh, my demonstration problems for the day. Okay, buddy. So let's get into this work for today. Uh, the first cool phrase we're going to talk about is this word uh, symmetry. Um, think about, uh, I don't know, maybe about a month ago, we were I was talking about um, what our work looks like once we're getting into algebra. And do you remember um, that we were talking about symmetrical expressions? Like expressions being balanced, meaning if the equal sign, if I were to draw a line through the equal sign, we want to make sure that the left side and the right side are balanced. Indeed, 8 does equal 8. Um, this can definitely cross over to what we're working on today with symmetry. I want you to think about symmetry as like um, the line that we would draw over an equal sign in a symmetric equation or a balanced equation. Can you see this dotted line divides this space? and this space perfectly, so much so that if I could fold this over top, 
over well if I could just like fold if this were a piece of paper and I could fold it over they would line up perfectly so this is known as a symmetric figure we are all good let's look at this piece here this one requires you to kind of tilt your head a little bit but you can see this dotted line perfectly separates oh no I have a low battery perfectly separates this shape from the shape so perfectly in fact that if we were to fold across this dotted line they would match up perfectly so this is also known as a symmetrical figure um, C, I think you can see very quickly that C is not symmetrical because if we were to fold this, imagine this is paper, if we were to fold this over along the dotted line, they would not match up perfectly. So that is not a symmetrical line. But now let's look at this one. Imagine that this is a piece of paper and we were to fold this um, kind of like macaroni shape along the dotted line over to the other side. This would be symmetrical because they would line up perfectly. Okay, so the next piece, I'm being fancy here trying to get in a few uh, more on a page than I typically do. This next piece, um, we need to find and draw all lines of symmetry for the following figures. And this is kind of fun. This is, uh, you're going to do this practice and go formative. Um, let's go ahead and change our color. And you're going to write the number of lines of symmetry that you found in the blank underneath the shape. So this is where this is cool. I really like imagining these as pieces of paper. Um, and this is where you're just going to imagine, hmm, if I were to draw a dotted line anywhere across the shape, would it be completely symmetrical? So I'm imagining um, just drawing a line right here. Oh, and of course, it's not going to be perfect. I'm going to do my best. Um, if I were to fold this piece of paper straight down the middle, then cool, I would have, um, I could fold this over and they would be completely symmetrical. Um, I'm trying to think of what else, what else I could do. I'm thinking, okay, so I'm going to erase that one. If I were to draw a line here, is that line symmetrical? Nice line, Miss Sissy. If I were to fold this space up, is that symmetrical? Do they match it perfectly? No, they do not. That is not a symmetrical line. Um, let's be creative. Let's see. If I were to fold this tip over this way, is that a symmetrical? symmetrical line would they match up perfectly no way miss um let's see what else what happens if i were to draw like a really nice uh, diagonal line can i flip this up over top are those spaces symmetrical no they're not you can see this is more of an obtuse angle and this looks like it's acute. It's just slightly less than 90 degrees. So that's not symmetrical. I'm looking at this and I'm not seeing any other symmetrical folds. If you see something, can you email me? Because right now I'm just thinking that this has one symmetrical fold and that was that first line right down the middle. Um, cool, let's look at B, let's think about, hmm, what are all the amazing ways that we could fold this piece of paper? I know it looks like a box on the screen, but it's actually a piece of paper. Fold this piece of paper so that we would have perfect symmetry. I'm thinking, oop, we can fold it right across the middle there. So that's one. Because if I flip this up, then we'll have this gorgeous triangle. Um, oops. I don't want to erase my one. Um, I'm also thinking if we fold it down the center here, we'll have another pair of gorgeous triangles. So that's two. And that's going to get rid of my tallies. And then any other folds that we can make on this figure to make it perfectly symmetrical? Mm, I'm thinking we could split it so then we have two rectangles. Again is... here, um, the other way. So it looks like this beautiful square is going to have four lines of symmetry. Um, let's look at this lightning bolt. Think about this lightning bolt. Is there anywhere that you could fold this lightning bolt so that it would be perfectly symmetrical? No, there's nothing you can do here that would result in a perfectly symmetric fold. So keep in mind, sometimes shapes will have gorgeous lines of symmetry, multiple lines of symmetry. Sometimes shapes like this won't have any lines of symmetry and that's totally, totally okay.
this next piece we are now classifying triangles I have it all filled in already just because I really want to unpack what all of this means keep in mind again friends please 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 thoroughly read and understand uh, the content that you find in the blue slides this is where you're going to find all of these new vocabulary words so please make sure that you spend some time here um, really understanding this new content clicking through and learning more about these different uh, triangles and again we have tons and tons of vocabulary going on right now okay cool so we've been working on classifying angles um, we are familiar with acute right and obtuse acute again is less than 90 degrees right is 90 degrees and obtuse is larger than 90 degrees these words are going to be um, our new words so equilateral I think um, should be pretty logical for us you can see this term equal in equilateral an equilateral triangle is a triangle where all of the side lengths are equal so this is some new geometric shorthand these lines across each of our um, sides this means that this side length is one well I shouldn't say one um, this shorthand is just um, showing us that all of these side lengths are the same um, so this here we can determine this as an equilateral triangle you can see within this equilateral triangle my friends that all one two three of the angles are acute they're all smaller than 90 degrees let's look up here and look at this triangle this triangle has these two new markings on it meaning that that side length and this side length are equal so this triangle has one two sides that are equal and then we can say that this side length is a third length we don't know what those lengths are but now we can classify this triangle as isosceles because isosceles is a very special type of triangle that has one two sides that are equal and the third side of course is going to be a different length so because we are given the information that these two sides are the same we immediately can classify that as an isosceles triangle within this special isosceles triangle I see an obtuse angle I see an angle that is larger than 90 degrees because this triangle has one obtuse angle we can immediately uh, classify this triangle as an obtuse triangle so it's an isosceles it's an obtuse isosceles triangle down here and these are great whenever you see this wonderful symbol that is um, always going to tell us that it, it is a right angle as soon as you see that symbol you can classify the triangle as a right angle triangle this triangle we're not given a ton more information we're not given um, information like we were in a and b so we're going to have to infer that all of these side lengths are different lengths i'm going to note that by using one two and three hashes anytime we have a triangle that has one two three different side lengths that is known as a scalene triangle scalene um, triangles are triangles that have one two three different side lengths down here again in d we see a triangle um, we're not given any information about side lengths so we are going to infer because we're really not given any information that this triangle has one two three different side lengths a triangle with three different side lengths is known as is known as a scalene triangle and again within this triangle I see an obtuse angle I see an angle that is larger than 90 degrees so I can go ahead and classify this triangle as an obtuse scalene triangle cool stuff huh it's like we're speaking a whole new language Okay, buddy so just a couple more here to close out before you start your um before you begin reading your blue side slides and then start your independent practice um you were going to be doing something like this in go formative today i changed the instructions a little bit just because we don't have a ruler in, in a protractor well we do but we are not using it in our digital practice today so today what we're going to use is the power of estimation it's a really really important power um, okay so here we're being told to draw triangles that fit the following classifications we have a right nice isosceles uh, 
classification, and then we have obtuse and scaling. So we're going to estimate and label the side lengths and angles. Okay, cool. So write isosceles triangles. I know right away, <laughs> get it, that a right triangle, well, I know triangles are going to have three sides. I'm pretty excited about that. If it's a right triangle, I know that it's going to have a right angle. So I'm going to go ahead and establish that right, right angle. It's totally okay to use the blue um, slides to recall that an isosceles triangle, one of those really, really cool triangles, we just saw one, that has two sides that are the same length and then one side that is a different length. So I'm going to do my best um, I think I might have. I'm going to do my best. Goodness sakes, this is going to be hard. I'm going to, okay, that's my writing. Oh gosh, I'm going to do my best to make sure that I have two sides that are the same. Okay, I'm hoping that those two sides are the same. And this is my isosceles triangle. So I have a right angle. These two sides are the same. And then this third line um, is going to be a different length. That's using estimation. I know it's not exactly precise, but that was my intention. Um, let's look at ob an obtuse scaling. It's really fun to um, use this new vocabulary because I just think it sounds very impressive. Okay, so obtuse. Let's think about what obtuse means. Obtuse is an angle that is larger than 90 degrees. So I want to go ahead and establish my angle first. So I'm going to make an obtuse angle. Do you see how this angle is definitely larger than 90 degrees? Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to think about what scaling means, and I'm going to recall that in a scaling triangle, all three sides are different lengths. So I'm actually going to just adjust that a little bit so I can make sure that this is, oops, that looks more like a right angle. Um, I'm going to make sure that my triangle is definitely scaling. Okay, so I definitely have that obtuse angle. This side length is shorter than this side, and then I'm going to connect my two lines. And I think this is a really good example of, of a scaling triangle because that side length is different than this side length, which is also different than that side length. Cool, so have some fun with this. Let me know what questions you encounter. Um, and I hope to see lots of your sweet faces at 10. Have fun with this. This is kind of cool. This looks like a tribal drawing or something. Enjoy your practice.